Joining us now with his uh, take on uh, this latest proposal and what it's going to get uh, take to get the country back on its feet financially, <clears throat> Ohio Senator Rob Portman. Great to have you on the show again, uh, Senator. The uh, Thanks, show. We want to keep doing things. We want to keep trying to help people. Are the, uh, the Democrats just going about it in the wrong way, or there's some merit? That was the first offer, right, uh, then on arrival. But are there some things in there we need to do and that Republicans would be willing to, uh, to work with the Democrats on? Well, of course there are. But, Joe, this is $3 trillion. This is more than the last four packages combined. And it does nothing, as I see it, to help get the economy moving. And that ought to be part of at least our proposal next time is to say, let's not just have another rescue package, which is going to be needed in certain sectors. We get that. But let's do some things to actually move this economy forward. And that's, you know, traditionally tax relief, uh, traditionally things like spending on infrastructure, smart spending, where you can actually create jobs and get the economy moving. Instead, this really goes in the other direction. So. It's not only $3 trillion that's, you know, more than we've already spent in four packages at a time when our debt and deficits are at record levels, but it's also not helping in terms of the economy. It is a wish list. Uh, there are things like salt relief, which uh, for those of you living in New York, you might like that, but 50% uh, of that benefit on salt relief she has now, this is for state and local taxes, is going to go to the top 1%. So this is something that Blue state senators have been pushing, so I'm sure they'll be happy to see that, but not in the context of this crisis. <laughs> let's focus on, yes, some things to close the gaps from what we've already done, uh, but then let's move on to how do we actually get this economy moving again. And I don't see that in the bill at all. Uh, you are a trade representative, too, and it's a, it's a political hot button whether we say that, you know, whether you discuss the origin of the virus or, but if you at least admit that maybe initially China wasn't forthcoming enough with all the details about what they had, and, and now we're in this, this, this position. I mean, people get a lot more strident about what they say China did. But either way, it, it, do you think we need to, to let this affect the recent trade negotiations, future trade negotiations? Should we go through with those first and, and maybe consider this later after the, the globe starts recovering from COVID or, or does it, do we never do anything? Well, the trade negotiations we have ongoing with China right now are in our interests and they're actually in the global economy's interest because it begins to level the playing field between the United States and China in the face of a huge trade deficit. So one, we ought to be sure that China continues to implement phase one, which includes, by the way, buying more of our products, including our agriculture products, which need that market right now badly because prices are low. Uh, but second, we have phase two that we're supposed to be negotiating, which is also fundamental because it gets at the issue of Chinese subsidies, including their state-owned enterprises, which don't just damage the U.S. economy, they damage economies around the world that are forced to compete on an unlevel playing field. So the trade negotiations that are going on right now, completion of phase one, and then moving on to phase two, as China has promised, and by the way, they need to make their commitments on, on these things, those should proceed, of course. The question is, you know, where do we go from here? And there's so many issues. As you know, I spent a lot of time looking at this issue of China taking our technology, our secrets, military, economic secrets, back to China through these so-called talent programs. We had, unfortunately, another example of that this week where an Arkansas professor has now been arrested, uh, allegedly, again, engaging in these Chinese programs without divulging it, fraudulently taking money from the Chinese. This is taxpayer money that's, you know, going out to do good research, and then China is taking that research. They've done it for 20 years. It's helped fuel their economy and the rise of their military. So we need to cut off things like that, and then we need to look at the supply chain issues because we need to bring more onshore, more to us, uh, to our shores, of essential products, whether it's pharmaceuticals or in the case of the protective gear that we're talking about, the gowns, the masks, and so on. We need to be able to rely on it, and therefore it needs to come back to the United States. How do you think Ohio and Governor DeWine are, are – uh are progressing in terms of reopening the state. I've got, you know, I got a lot of relatives still back there, Senator, as you know. Yeah. Uh, and I thought yeah. DeWine, DeWine's got his popularity's up a lot. My, some of my relatives are, are like, uh, they think it's it's too uh, uh, that it's taking too long, maybe, and that and that the, the the time that that he's talking about has been pushed back too far. Uh, it, it's a microcosm of what we see in in the political debate that we're having right now. How do you think? 
the uh, DeWine's doing in terms of opening up, uh, you know, trying to get the economy back open for, for people that aren't working. Yeah, I think he's doing a good job because we are reopening. Uh, so on Friday, we're re reopening restaurants for outdoor dining, as an example. Uh, we've got factories up and going. Offices are back, uh, you know, at work. Um, construction is, is going again. So I think it's smart because what we're doing is we're re reopening in Ohio as we're bringing on more testing, as we have more protective gear, you know, as we're beginning to see remdesivir and hopefully more antiviral medications. Those are the three big things now we need to focus on. So I think the reopening is smart. I think it's being done in a proper phasing. And I think you're going to see in Ohio that because we're doing it right, we're not going to see this resurgence. Are we going to have hot spots? Probably. And, Joe, that's why the testing is so important, because the testing, the contact tracing and all that is what you throw at a hot spot and stop the spread of the virus. So I think we're doing it about right in Ohio. Look, nobody knows what's, what's right, as we heard yesterday in the testimony. The experts are all over the place. But the reality is we got to get back to work. we got to get back to a normal life here and do it safely. And I think those two things can be done together, and we're doing it in Ohio. Andrew. Hey, Senator, uh, had, a, had a couple of questions for you. One is, as one part of that bill, which I, I know you have questions about, but as one part of that bill, there is the intention to extend unemployment benefits through 2021. Uh, given the remarkable efforts that the, the Fed is pursuing to help businesses and also so much of uh, the, the, the previous stimulus effort, my question to you is, would you be an advocate for unemployment insurance to help people through, the, through into 2021 at this Andrew, point? Andrew, that's an example in this legislation of something that's going to hurt, not help the economy. That's how I feel about it. Uh, the additional $600 federal benefit is on top of an average of about $360 that the states have, uh, meaning that in our states right now, if you are making, say, 50000 bucks a year, it is more advantageous to be on unemployment insurance than it is to go back to work. So was it necessary to do something to pump up uh, UI? Absolutely. Uh, but the level that we took it to makes it very difficult for many small businesses in Ohio and around the country to bring their employees back. In some states, they say they're going to enforce the rule that you have to be seeking work. Therefore, if there's a job, you have to leave UI. Other states are not able to do that. In fact, I think many are not, maybe most, because they're just overwhelmed. And many employers don't want to do that to their employees. So we ought to put together a package that says, OK, let's continue to help people. But how about having a bonus for returning to work? So instead of an additional $600 of a federal benefit, again, almost twice the state benefit that's currently in place in places like New York, that makes it very difficult to get people back to work if they're making more on unemployment than they can make it work, why not provide a bonus to people to say, if you go back to work, you can take some of this unemployment insurance with you. If you take 450 bucks with you, as an example, per week, remember this is per week, uh, that would mean that in every state, for minimum wage workers, it would be more advantageous to go back to work than to stay on unemployment insurance. That $450 would go back to you, to your workplace, between now and the end of July when this unemployment insurance run, runs out, the extra benefit. And this would give us an incentive to get people back to work. It would help the individual workers who Senator, many want to get back Senator, to work. They want you, to get back to health care and connection to the company. But the, the House bill goes Senator, the opposite direction. It says, let's, let's continue this till next year. Right. Senator, the, what, 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 do you tell the, what do you tell the person who's out of work, who doesn't have the option to go back to work because the job that they had no longer exists? The restaurant that is well, now living exactly. in a socially well, distanced world, that the economics of the business don't, don't work anymore. Right. If someone is out of work through no fault of their own, they can't go back, of course, they should get unemployment insurance. And, you know, we extend unemployment insurance another 13 weeks, by the way, also in our legislation. We also provided it for people who are self-employed. So, you know, that can all continue. But the point is, Andrew, we should all want people to go back to work. I mean, that, that ought to be what we're doing here in Washington is trying to help the economy move forward, not to encourage the economy to remain stagnant and to encourage people not to return to work when they're needed. So I, I hope you're talking to employers out there uh, about this, because I think what you'll hear is a consistent message, which is we're now beginning to reopen, but we're having a difficult time getting people back to work who run unemployment insurance for, for good reasons. You can see, you know, if you're if you're making in New York about 55 to 60,000 bucks a year, it's more advantageous to be on unemployment insurance than to be back to work. So why not provide a bonus to that person? By the way, if you did the 450 bucks, mm -hmm of a bonus to workers, good for workers. They're going to get their salary plus that. It also is great for the taxpayer. It saves the states and the federal government 
just back of the envelope calculation, about $45 billion just between now and the end of July, $45 billion. And it helps the workers because, again, they're getting the bonus plus their salary, gets them back to work, gets them reengaged with their company. So it's not going to work for everybody because there'll be some businesses that won't be able to reopen as quickly. But those that are reopening are looking for workers right now. So we should not be standing yeah. in the way of that. We should be helping to facilitate that. I think this is a bipartisan proposal that has, has real promise rather than what in the House bill, which is going to make it harder to get our economy back and going. Hey, hey Senator, I, I actually love that idea. I think it's fantastic because it has the added benefit of rewarding the workers who are on the front lines, the minimum wage workers who are going in and going to work when so many other people get to stay home and work. But how much Absolutely. support is there actually in the Republican Party for this? I mean, because it, it, it's not cheap. You're still talking about paying people $450 a week. It's not the $600 a week they'd be making on unemployment alone. But how, how much support do you actually ha have both from Republicans and from Democrats on an idea like this? Well, I think a lot of people are looking at it for the first time, uh, Becky, and I'm talking to Republicans and Democrats about it. Uh, people are intrigued by it because, you know, the alternative is, is unacceptable uh, because, you know, again, we need to get people back to work and encourage that, and yet we want to be sure to help these workers. By the way, I think it pairs nicely with what the president is talking about in terms of a payroll tax cut because those workers who have stayed on the job will be getting a payroll tax cut, and, and that's important, too. So I think it does reward workers, as you're saying, and I think it's important for us to do things right now in Washington that reward workers, reward work in general, and help to move the economy forward without getting more revenues into our hospitals, uh, without getting more revenue into our universities and our colleges, without getting more revenue into the federal government to deal with our unprecedented level of deficit that we're looking at this year. You know, we're not going to be able to turn things around, and, and that requires us getting this economy moving again. So I think that's, that ought to be our, our, our focus here is how, in a smart way, to actually help ensure that we can get this economy up and going again safely. And that includes getting people back to work. Senator, the, the question, though, that I would ask you, and, and I want to get people back to work as, as much as anybody, uh, but I would also advocate what you just said at the end there, mm -hmm. which was we all want to do it safely. Really? Um, and there are lots of people out there yeah. that don't feel necessarily that their employers have set up a system right now uh, to do it safely, for example. There's other people. Uh, obviously, that are either uh, in particular uh, age cohort or have underlying conditions or other things that may not be able to go back to work uh, or may not feel comfortable going back to work. And I think there's a real question of, of trying to find a balance between getting people back to work in the safest possible way. And I'd remind you, uh, even Dr. Fauci says, we don't have the testing in place, the tracing in place. We have none of the things that you would actually want in place to set this up. So there is a, we are somewhat doing this more blindly than I think anybody would want to. And therefore, the question is what kind of protection should we put in place for citizens in this country at a time when we're providing all sorts of insurance for businesses? Yeah, well, Andrew, look at the guidelines because the guidelines that are set up by the state of Ohio and by CDC uh, require that these businesses do this safely. So you do wear a face mask when you're in the on the factory floor. Uh, you do have hand sanitizer available for everybody. You do do temperature testing as you're walking into the office building. I mean, these are these are measures that are common sense. It should be taken. Social distancing continues at work. So I, I couldn't agree with you more. Of course, you need to have a, a safe workplace. In terms of the testing in Ohio, compared to Two weeks ago, as of two weeks from now, we'll have about a 600 percent increase in testing. Now, Ohio is not every state, but that kind of testing is beginning to ramp up around the country. One thing that I will tell you that I do support in the Democrats' bill that they talked about yesterday is more testing and contact tracing. That's smart. That helps us reopen the economy in a safe way and keep it open, because when there are hot spots, we're going to need, as I said earlier, to throw everything at it in, in terms of testing and contact tracing. And I mean diagnostic testing, the traditional testing. The antibody test is great, too. But it doesn't replace the need for a diagnostic test. So, I mean, I think in nursing homes we ought to be testing much more frequently. So I, I think there are ways to get at this and reopen the economy that are smart. I'd much rather spend the money on more testing than continuing to have more money go into rescue because more testing is going to re result in more economic growth because it's going to get people, as you say, more safely back to work. So that's money well spent. And Dr. Fauci also indicated testing is increasing. Uh, so is this antiviral medication, thank goodness, finally. And remdesivir is the first. I hope there'll be many other the FDA approves that are, that are effective. I was told by Francis Collins at the NIH yesterday that's coming. And then third, 
You've got to have the PPE, and finally we're getting control of that. We have now masks available around the country because they can be recycled, they can be decontaminated quickly. We have a 4.5 million a day capacity just on recycling, thanks to an Ohio company, Battelle. Uh, we have more gowns finally here. We have, you know, more gloves and so on. So all of this is important, okay. but it, it should be done in conjunction with us beginning to get people back to work and beginning to get back to a more normal life.